Yes, guys, uh, good afternoon. I hope you can hear me. If you can hear me, you say yes, and then we set the ball rolling. Hello. Okay, good. I think you can now hear me. I've got some confirmation. That is good. Uh, we are ending this uh, topic today. I would have said the come rain, come sunshine, but since it has already been raining, I can, uh, it suffices to say that come sunshine, it will end. Whether you like it or not, we are finishing La Plus now or uh, in the next two hours, probably in less than the next two hours. Actually, I need one hour because uh, most of the content, there are only two subtopics uh, we are going to look at. That is just uh, uh, the differentiation of the Laplace function, and then we look at the convolution. The others will just be examples, and for the examples that are in this uh, uh, handout, 90% uh, we have already covered. So I'll basically concentrate on uh, how to solve uh, an ODE using the Laplace transform. And once that is covered, the rest of the, the examples in there are simply there to appease your curiosity. So yes, I said we'll stop at two, but I'm hoping even by say one of 30, we will be done. Okay. Uh, so let's pick up from where we stopped. We had already covered the uh, we looked at the differentiation rule and we looked at the integration rule and we went through these examples. So what we are supposed to finalize with in this topic so that on a Monday we start on a new topic uh, is the Laplace transform of the derivative and then you also look at the convolution. So uh, for now, we already know uh, what the Laplace, the definition of the Laplace transform is. And uh, given that we are already aware of that, uh, that implies that uh, what we are trying to pick on today uh, is uh, quite similar to what you are already familiar with. So uh, by definition of uh, Laplace, we have uh, oh my, uh, okay. So by definition of uh, Laplace, uh, let me see this. Okay. Right. So by definition of the Laplace transform. Uh, we know that uh, it is given by uh, L. Uh, this is f of t. This is L f of t, which is uh, the integral from zero to infinity. This is e to the minus st. Uh, this is f of t. And this is a DT that we are already familiar with that. Okay. So since we are already familiar with that, since we want to look at the derivative, uh, we just have to uh, incorporate uh, the notation to indicate that we are indeed looking for the derivative. So that's why you see we have that F prime and then the primary here, which comes from the definition. This is exactly the same as the definition we have here. So the difference between the definition we've been using since we started this topic uh, is we have included the notation for the derivative. That is the prime and the prime there. 
So with this, it means now we can use uh, integration by parts. So if we are to use integration by uh, parts, how would you go about this? Uh, you are the experts in the integration, guys, with your calculus uh, two which is integral calculus. So we all know that when you're dealing with the integration by parts, you have the integral of u uh, dv. This is a u guys. This is a u dv. Uh, this is uh, equal to uh, uv. This is uv minus the integral uh, of v du. Okay, so if you try to prove this, uh, what would happen in there is uh, just to select your u. Uh, you look at the left hand side, select u and select the dv. And once you have that, you can just substitute. So in this case, uh, if we let u, we are now looking at these terms here. So uh, if I take the red here, to be my u. And then I let, uh, I let the blue, if I may take this, the blue, I take it to be my dv. Okay. So we all know that once you have a u, you have to look for du. So in this case, what is du? Uh, my du would be what? My du, if I let u be this, then it implies that uh, my du is simply a minus e, rather minus s. This is a minus s. This is minus s e to the minus st. That's what we have. And then that dv, if I have this as a dv, then I have to look for v. du, I have differentiated. dv, I have to integrate. And my v will simply, since this is f prime, I'll simply get f uh, of t. That is what I have. And once I have these, I substitute them. So remember from this uh, definition, I have uv. What is uv? u is the minus s. Uh, I am here. I have uh, uv. So I have the minus s e to the minus st. That is. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm? What am I not getting right here? Okay, I need to go a little bit slow. There is something I'm not seeing. Why? <sighs> okay, I expected uh, some S here. Maybe I'm getting this wrong. Uh, we have U, that is it, U. I think let me first put it here for completeness. Otherwise, if I'm looking for u and v, okay, that's fine. Uh, uv, I have my u, which is e to the minus st, then v is ft. I was making a mistake in the interpretation of this. So uv is this, that is this term here. Uh, my uv is this term here. This is the UV now, U, V. So uh, the U is the E to the minus ST. The V is what I have computed as FT, which is that. We are moving from zero to infinity. Then minus, uh, this is minus, but remember uh, the V and the DU. The DU has a minus S E to the minus ST. So this minus and this minus gives you that plus there. Uh, this S here is what we are factoring out. That is the integral of, uh, remember it is uh, 
VDU. So the V is the FT, which is this one here. Then DU, DU is the E minus ST. The minus S came with the, uh, changed the minus to plus S, which is this one here. Okay. And once we have this, that completes, I think, everything. So what happens here is we throw in the limits. Uh, here it is infinity. Remember, this is a negative. Uh, that basically, if you throw in this one here, that becomes a zero. That is minus. You substitute the lower limit. That is the minus F zero, which is this one here. And then plus S. Uh, the S is this and then that one there so we conclude that uh, if you have uh, uh, the integral but remember this integral here uh, the term we have in here this term that we have here this term is actually uh, the laplace this one here So the integral from zero to infinity over that is the Laplace of f of t. That's why when we are now finalizing it, we'll say that the Laplace of f, uh, uh, the, 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 the derivative of a transform, that is f prime t, is equal to, we take this one first, that is s l f t, because the term in the green box here is l f t minus this f of zero which is that one there. Okay, so uh, that said, we can uh, now go ahead and look for the second derivative and then we find the third derivative. So what do we do for the second derivative? Uh, for the second derivative, in this case, we will begin here. So if we let uh, by uh, definition of uh, Rather, through this derivation, we have discovered that uh, the Laplace, we have discovered that the Laplace of Ft is given by this, that is this term here, this one, okay? So we've discovered that the Laplace is given by this. So if the Laplace is given by that, then we can go ahead and we say, if we let GT be F prime of T, then it implies that if you differentiate this term here, uh, if we let GT be this, so if we call this one a certain equation, Then we differentiate this equation. So if I call this one equation one, then it means differentiating one would give me this equation two here. Hopefully we are together. So if this is my equation one, I differentiate equation one, it will give me equation two. That is the G prime T, which is equal to F prime prime T. This is differentiating equation one. And once I have differentiated uh, one to get two, then I know that uh, from this two, I can compute the Laplace of this and that. So from two, using two, if you now compute the Laplace of two, it means I have uh, L, I now have L of this function here. Hopefully we are together. I have one, I have differentiated one to get two. Now I am computing the Laplace of two, which is now again L here. And this is what we have. Now we want to determine the Laplace of two. So to get the Laplace of two, that's why we have this L uh, G prime of T, which is equal to L, F prime prime of T. I hope we are together there. But from this, we know that G prime T, now look at uh, 
G prime t, if uh, remember we said gt, uh, we said gt, gt is f prime t. So when we talk of uh, g prime t, this is now differentiating this, but we already have from this, if I call this one equation is zero. Mm -hmm. From equation zero, we know that f prime t is that, implying that uh, g prime t is the same as SL. I'm simply substituting uh, the f with g. We already know the derivative. Uh, so SL g t minus g zero. This was f, which was f zero. So if I substitute, it means I have now got uh, equation three here. Hopefully no one is getting lost. So I have this and in having this three here, I can now go ahead and uh, compute. Uh, since I already have this, but remember the GT, this GT here is F prime T. Guys, I really hope we are together. Okay, so from three, from three, we have GT. Remember, we have used this LG prime of T based on equation zero, this equation here. We have based it on this equation. So since we've based it on this equation, this is the same as that, which is the same as that. But from this term here, from this one here, the one in red, We know that this GT here is F prime T. The GT is this one here. GT is F prime T. Don't forget that our GT here is the same as F prime T. So instead of GT, I substitute F prime T. That is this step here. So uh, that is this step right here. That is this step, guys. So instead of this G, uh, GT, GT is F prime, I substitute F prime T. That's why I have SL F prime minus G zero. This G0 is this one here, which is that. And of course, on the substitution, I now know that my F prime T from equation is zero, guys, equation is zero. My F prime T, if I take the Laplace of this, so I'm maintaining the S out, then I substitute for S prime, rather uh, F prime, the Laplace of the first derivative, is given by uh, the Laplace of ft minus f of zero. That is, uh, this equation is zero is being substituted into uh, Lf prime of t here. That's why we have s, then we bring the whole of this here, that is the s ft minus f zero. Minus g zero, this g zero is that g zero there, okay? So since we know that GT is uh, F prime T, then it means if we initialize uh, at T zero, it means uh, G zero is F prime zero. So it means I have to substitute uh, this G zero uh, with F prime, uh, F prime zero. And if I do that, I get the final answer. Which final answer uh, is actually, which final answer is this term here. So I take that one to be F prime zero. Remember when I expand this inside, this will be S squared, L of that, which is this term here. Then the S comes with this, that is minus SF0, which is this one here. 
Then minus, remember there is a minus G0. But this minus G0, we have got it here because we said GT is uh, F prime. So since it is uh, at T0, we throw zero in there. We realize that G0 is F prime zero. Therefore, where we have uh, a G0, that G0, we substitute uh, F prime zero. And when you, you replace now G prime T, remember our G prime T is F prime prime T. So we now replace G prime T with F prime prime T, which is this one here. And we end up with the, the second derivative as this. Right. Okay. On getting that as uh, our second uh, derivative, we can now go ahead and find the third derivative, the fourth derivative. You can go up to that. You can go up to the nth uh, derivative. And by nth derivative, that is your choice of uh, knowing the order to which you'd want to exhaust uh, your differentiation. Right, okay, so that is finished. Uh, Laplace transform of an integral here, same story. There is no big deal here. Uh, by definition, if you have gt, which is a zero to t of f u du, then uh, uh, g prime, if you let g prime uh, be f of t, remember when you have this, if you integrate this, if you integrate both sides, if you integrate the left and the right, this will basically give you uh, gt, which is this one which will also be the integral of this. Uh, with respect to u, we'll take the integral with the t and we substitute this one with uh, a u, so that when you throw in the limits, it comes back to t. So if you take uh, the Laplace transform on uh, both sides, what would that be? Uh, you can edit, there is uh, a curry bracket here. That is the Laplace transform over that. And of course, there is the Laplace transform of this one here, guys. Please include those uh, symbols so that uh, the notation looks complete. Okay. So if you compute the Laplace transform of this, that is based on this one here. Uh, it would mean you now have S. Remember, L of G prime T, we have already computed this. This would be S. Uh, the Laplace of GT minus G0, which is equal to that. So if this is the case, and if we impose this condition here, uh, if G0 is 0, it means this goes to 0. You remain with S, L, GT, but you want uh, the Laplace of GT. If you make this the subject, it will be 1 over S, L, uh, the Laplace of Ft, this one here. But remember, Gt, this Gt here, is given by that one there. Maybe I need to... The Gt... The Gt is given by this. So if you substitute this Gt, uh, in here, if you substitute the GT in here, that gives you that equation 1.5.17. Just to give me.
Yes, yes, guys. All right, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, I think we had finished this. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me. Can you hear me, guys? Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Can you hear me? Ah, good, 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 good. Okay, uh, we were looking at the the integral of uh, Laplace, uh, the integral form of Laplace, which we have uh, exhausted now. I think that is it. Uh, right, so uh it would be now okay for us to go and now do very many examples of this but uh since there is something very small here to do with the convolution i suggest we cover this convolution and now we look at examples that capture all of this there are examples in here very many i'll probably do one or two this lecture could even end in the next probably 20 minutes really because all of these things we did. Uh, there are examples to do with those uh, functions, uh, applications. Uh, applications here, it is to do with examples. These ones, they are all for you. There is nothing much here. So my interest is going to be in, uh, okay, here. So this is where we are going to apply the concepts we've just discussed. Uh, remember, we talked of uh, uh, the derivative of a Laplace uh, transform. So this is what we've been discussing: that if you have uh, uh, if you have uh, a first derivative, this is its equivalence. Uh, if you have uh, a second derivative, this is what we have. If you have a third derivative, you can go with this one here. Fourth derivative, fifth derivative, uh, you can uh, actually uh, determine these recursively. All right. So uh, that's what we are supposed now to. We are supposed to apply that concept we just discussed. The same with the integral. Uh, on these examples here. So we can come and solve. I don't have to solve many. I can probably solve this Kawano example. Then you can go and you quench your curiosity as third years with all of these examples. There are very many for you here. All of these, it is solving. All of these, you will go and you do. Hmm? Actually, we may even start a new topic today, I think. We can start on the Z transform then I don't miss the other one hour. This is good, very good. Okay, so since these are some of the examples we are going to look at, uh, my interest now, firstly, guys, if you allow, let me first finish off uh, this other one last concept that is to do with uh, a convolution. Let's discuss the convolution here. And then we go with dwell into the examples, maybe for some 15 minutes. And if we do that, like for 15 minutes, then we'll be able to actually, I think we can start on a Z transform today. I had underestimated uh, my time. But since we are going up to two, we can finish this in the next probably 20 minutes. And then we look at. Uh, we look at uh, the Z transform. That won't be a bad way to move forward. Okay, uh, the Laplace transform of a convolution. Convolution is, uh, oh, uh, just a warning. I have less than one minute to end this session. Please, as soon as this, as soon as this session ends, log back in using uh, the same link. Some of you are always obsessed with the passcodes and I always ignore because I know that link is enough. I have seen people saying, what if I'm using a laptop? Uh, but uh, of course, uh, when people have glitched minds in terms of technology, sometimes you have to ignore some requests. But uh, I know 
uh, if you want a, a, a passcode, you can generate it. And I think it had been generated by one of the good Samaritans. So those interested in the passcodes, they have been shared before, but that link is enough whether you're using a laptop or any gadget. Okay, so when this closes,